What you call beauty and grace and suppleness in writing are nothing but the consensus of men who have grown used to hearing each other. Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Today we are talking about the follow-up of the grace, the follow-up to The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu, and that is The Wall of Storms. Uh, this is book two in the Dandelion uh, Dynasty series. The next book, uh, supposed not supposed to be out until next year. Um, again, uh, that, that one's called The Veiled Throne, at least according to Goodreads it is. Um, once again, I read this book with Talani at Tea Time Tea Reads. I will leave a link to her channel down there in the doobly-doo. Um, this one, somehow, was even better than the last one. Everything I loved about the first one... The Grace of Kings was amplified uh, to the umpteenth level here. Uh, you had brand new creatures, you had brand new characters, um, you had some very significant, significant happenings. Um, and if I'm honest, once again, I'm gonna say it, it, it kind of, it, it puts uh, a song of ice and fire to shame as far as I'm concerned. Um, I think that there's the perfect amount of characters um, in this one and the last one, whereas Game of Thrones just kind of, I, I felt myself getting overwhelmed. Um, and in this one, I didn't feel that whatsoever. Uh, with the first one, I also, the only thing I would say is if you're going to read the series, do not do the audiobook. Especially not the first one, I forgot to mention this in that review. But with the first book, you have two characters named Finn. One is F-I-N and the other one is P-H-I-N. And you really have to pay attention to uh, who is who and and what's going on. I know that sounds. Uh, of course, you have to. I got a bird over here. Um, of course, you have to be able to. Uh, of course, you got to pay attention and listen closely. But there were some times, even listening closely, where I got confused on who was who. Uh, the best part about this book for me was the fact um, that Luan Zia was one of the, it's basically I felt this way it basically is his book it tells um, his story well, him and Zomi Kudosu um, Zomi is his uh, protege and Luan Zia if you've read the first book you know that he was uh, a great tactician Strat stra strategist tactic I'm not sure words of words anyways um, he was one of the he's the one who talked Kuni and doing some of the more outlandish things that happened in the first book. Uh, Kunigaru is the emperor in this one. He rose to power in the first one. Um, I guess that's kind of a spoiler, but sorry. Um, the uh, Like I said, the best part of this book for me was learning Luan Zia's story, um, some of his backstory, and getting to know Zomi Kadosu. Um, the book opens up terrifically. Um, it's I guess this one's a little more along the lines this is how i felt anyways this one's a little more along the lines of traditional fantasy and how it starts um the, some of the trouble they get into and there are things in here um I, minor spoilers so if you're worried about if you don't want to know anything about this book usually i don't go this in depth with my reviews but if you don't want to know anything else about this book um, just know that I highly recommend it. It's better than the first one, so easy five stars. But I'm going to get into some minor spoilers here. So in three, two, one, minor spoilers. Um, so there are dragons in this one, but they're not really dragons. They're like these big bulbous uh, things. Uh, I think they said that it's almost like a whale with a giraffe's neck and uh, like deer antlers and whatnot. Amazing, amazing things. They're called... Garrett Nathans, I believe that's how you pronounce it, because I didn't listen to the audiobook this time, so I'm not 100% sure on how to pronounce it. But the Garrett Nathans are these uh, dragon-like creatures that the Layuku, who are a completely new race of people to the story, um, who, they end up writing them, and they're they're a they're a race of or I don't know I don't know what you call I guess it's a race of people um, that are dragon riders. Um, and they're also barbarians kind of deal, so they're nomadic people. Uh, very, very fascinating culture that one is. And the, uh, the main guy, uh, Peiku Tenro, I believe that is his name. I hope I pronounced that right. And the only reason I'm laughing is because of my own pronunciation, not because the name's funny. Um, Peiku Tenro, 
um, is their leader. Um, and he has, I believe there's a prince and a princess, um, and I, I'm pretty sure that's what, they, because they don't really call them prince and princess in there a, as much. Uh, there's another term for him, even Peku is the term for king. <laughs> Okay then, Peku is the term for king in this culture. Um, but the the learning about the nomadic tribe, the Lioku, and and their enemies, and also learning about the Wall of Storms and how that is traversed, um, all that stuff is absolutely amazing. It's a huge epic fantasy uh, plot. You go to new places, new new lands. Um, you have travel across the sea, you have gods warring, you have all this amazing stuff going on uh, that just, I mean, it just hit all the right notes for me. Um, I think one of the things, even though Luanzia goes in on a quest in this one, you don't have the, the trappings. You don't have the trappings of your typical fantasy novel. Um, it's just one of those things where I... I couldn't find any fault with it, and usually that is not the case when it comes to epic fantasy. Um, so those are those are the pluses. There really isn't any minuses here for me. Uh, if you've read The Wall of Storms or the first one, The Grace of Kings, if you've read either one of these books and you'd like to discuss them with me or let's have a chat down there in the doobly-doo about them, let me know if you loved them, if you hated them. And like always, if you loved them or hated them, let me know why you loved them or hated them and we can have a discussion about it. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.